she was a little girl, she used to come to the dancing show, Disco Teen in New Jersey, uh, Newark, New Jersey. And she made this uh, little picture here, which we used to show. It's on the DVD, too. And uh, we had a sponsor called Fisher, Fisher Bread, Buttercup White Bread. We've got all this stuff on here. That weight one, left one pound? Yeah. Only fine vegetables, something or other, it says. But she made the, the, made the little girl uh, look like me, somehow. And a loaf of bread cost 27 cents in those days. It was white bread, I guess, wasn't it? And I used to, I remember when I did the commercials, I used to kick the, kick the loaf of bread and toss it around, do all kinds of things. But they never objected to it. I guess people like, uh, who were advertising, like the repetition, no matter what. And then over here, she, she made this, and I forget, when did you make this one? I can't hear what she said. What'd she say, John? Channel 7. Channel 7, yeah. So this is what it is here. <laughs> this is colossal. And it's made of wax. And it's a very religious thing. Because, was it your sister? My sister. My sister went to a temple and used Use the candles. Yeah. She worked at a temple. She didn't worship, she worked. Okay. And so she made this some wax. And we don't know whose hair, but it's real hair. Is it not none of yours, but some of hers? My girlfriend's mother was a beautician. Oh, it came from a lady barber shop. Oh, it's real hair. And it's and it's uh, lasted it's really in great shape. Uh, the box is kind of falling apart. The cushion belonged to her mother, she told me a while ago. Anyway, it's, uh, it's pretty neat. I mean, the best part of it is that the wax did not melt over the years. It's been in my closet, and the box has uh, gotten kind of worked because it's old, uh, what you call it? Contact, contact paper, contact stuff. Yeah, you know. Everybody thought it was great, but it doesn't last too long. Uh, and what's the other thing we got? Oh, the great cake. We got the great cake here. And the big picture back here. This was this is something she made for Happy New Year Christmas. What year? In the mid '60s. Yeah, yeah. And she made two other great ones. One of me with like flames going up, and another one of my so-called family, my my dear, my wife, and the little kid. Uh, which she has in her home right now. So we're, we're returning these to her <laughs> after all these years. Uh, there are only a few people that I am aware of. Uh, thank you, Igor. <laughs> he's he's our, our greatest helper. This is, uh, I was going to say, I was going to say something. Oh, I was going to make mention that if I were start to uh, say something and all of a sudden I raise my hand, you're, both, you're supposed to say, what were we talking about? Because if I start in the story, before long I forget what I started with. Uh, that's what's happening in my life these days. And uh, already I forgot. Oh, yes, she made this too. She's not sure she made this, but I think it is. She said she made two other cakes. And it has the proverbial scalp around the neck, you know. Rosemary, you better get up here and get in this picture because if you made this thing, she's not sure it was hers. Unless she looks at it, she's beginning to doubt that indeed it's not hers or not. Uh, certain stitching and all that that she recalls. Here we go. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, <laughs> she's been a great contributor because she's an artist. And, uh, we've got all this stuff, not much more. I think if you've seen the DVD, the last half of the DVD includes uh, some of these things uh, that I had in my closet all these years. I used to joke about my closet like I was scared it wouldn't be. But uh, when we made that extended DVD, I had to go in. I had to go in and uh, find out what was there, the old stuff that you people had sent me over the years. And, uh, now instead of being in a closet, it's laying on the side of my so-called living room. And I don't know what to do with it. I'm trying to organize it so... Uh, doesn't clog up the walking around area, but it's pretty good. Thank you, my dear. Again and again, uh, she's 
uh, lovely lady. I remember her brother. Your brother used to bring her, bring me, bring her you to the. Uh, hey, there's a Z on here. Did you know that? Does that ring a bell? She's just not sure about these, but I'm, I'm certain that I wouldn't have kept it except for the fact that she has uh, done so many other things uh, for us that we could use on the show. Um, now, what was I talking about? Ha, ha, ha. Uh, 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 uh. Does anybody have a question? That always helps me. No questions. Okay, cast is missed. <laughs> well, this was such a beautiful room. Was, I don't know how many people remember it, but that was solid glass over there. And there was a, and this glass here, I think there's a skylight here. It was in a very amazing place. But uh, Kevin told me that they lowered the ceiling, but it isn't that low. They said it was right down to here, but it isn't. And this is a great little room. Um, it's nice that we're here again in this building, and next we'll be here again in June, uh, and it will be a much more crowded hall. Oh, this midterm course that we give here, and old time <laughs> movies and whatever, and TV uh, doesn't bring as many people in uh, in the midwinter, but it's kind of fun. It's just a nice, easy crowd here today, and you don't have to wait in outside in an hour, two hours, three hours. The worst was. Three hours and a half that people waited in line to get in the tent over at the Sheraton in bad weather. And uh, the fire marshal said there were too many people in the tent, too many people in the building, and you can't go in until somebody comes out, all that stuff. So it was an endless wait. And uh, yes, yes, come in, come in, come in, come in. Especially if you have a question. Do you? He has a question, yes, ma'am. And the only question is I can't hear where she's saying. Say what? Were you ever in a movie? Yes, I was in a movie. I'm in one now called The Doctor Something's Cross of Horror, a very small part. They want me to do the main character, and I said, I can't remember lines, and I would hate to be reading it off, you know, cue card or something. So I backed off of that, and uh, what's his name? I read books. Conrad, he's not here, he didn't come up. No, no, he doesn't like to come in the winter time. Oh, he's I in Tennessee or somewhere? Virginia. Oh, okay. All right. Well, tell him we miss him next time you talk to him. And uh, he took the part and so on. So that's around. But I was in the... Uh, oh, uh, the one called Brain Damage, which was on video, and uh, something else. I can't remember another one. But small parts. But I never got in a big time movie. You know who was in movies? Uh, and I'm about to sit down here. I'm very good at sitting down. Getting up is another question. Uh, there we are. <laughs> uh, okay, what was I talking about? Frankenhooker, Frankenhooker, yes, yes, yes. He claimed he's going to, uh, what's his first name, the guy? Uh, Frank Hanelot. <laughs> yes, he, he did the movie and uh, he threatened to go back into it. He said he couldn't make any movies, or couldn't make any money on living making a uh, low budget films. Uh, so he went back into advertising or something. But last time I saw him, he was here. He always came to the convention. I haven't seen him in three years. And he said he was going to do it again. Have you heard from him? No. Uh, he loved making scary movies. And uh, I, otherwise, I, I did a very, very small part of those things. So you asked the question of ever a movie, the answer is probably not. <laughs> very, very small time. Uh, I'm actually surprised that somebody didn't uh, get a collection of all the people who were doing introductions on TV of the scary movies and put us all together in a crazy, you know, low budget movie, but nobody ever did that. And Dick Clark, I thought years ago that he should have gotten us all together because he had a network thing and he's, you know, he's doing all kinds of shows over the years. Uh, but he could have got us all together for a uh, at least one Halloween. As close as I ever came was Elvira asked me to come out and, uh, uh, oh God, what's his name? From Cleveland. Goulardi. Goulardi and a guy named Stanley from California, San Francisco, who introduced the uh, Shock Theater movies. So we were with her for a, a day or so, making some introductions for her October specials that she had out there in California. 
she, she's a really nice lady. She came here last year, I think maybe October. Yes, she did. Uh, but somebody should have done it. I thought maybe Dick Clark should have done the one because uh, he and I run together around into each other in Philadelphia when he was just beginning um, bandstand and I was just beginning on TV too on the Cowboy Show called Action in the Afternoon. Every once in a while somebody says, I remember Action in the Afternoon. You could pick it up if you were, you know, if you're close to 60. It would be like 1956, I think it was on the air for a year. And it was a daily show with horses and guns inside and outside and the weather, whatever the weather was, is great. You had to run inside the studio for the interior scenes. And it was live, you couldn't stop, you had to keep going. So if anything went wrong, you had to keep going, you know. And it was really neat. And so then I got asked to do the horror movies. And I think he'd been doing uh, his, his uh, bandstand show for maybe two years, I'm not sure. And, uh, and he was very close with the producers of Cameo Parkway. Right? because they had a lot of hit records coming out of there. And so you could uh, be on his show right away if you had a pretty good record. And they put you in a taxi cab and you go for 10 minutes out to the studio and you'd be on the air with him. Uh, um, I tried actually, I sent him a, a video when he got sick this last time. Uh, gee, how long has it been since he got his stroke? Six months or more? Whatever. Here, yeah, and uh, so his wife was really nice. I met her years ago just at the office there where he worked. But uh, and I didn't see him over the weekend because I didn't see that live part. I saw the next day on some show. He didn't say very much, but he, you know, his voice was no different. His voice, I think, was the most damaging thing to him. He got very discouraged when he he got into speech therapy and now he can converse. But uh, he didn't get up and walk around. I don't know. He, Anyway, she sent me a nice note and, and I sent him something to uh, remind him that we both started about the same time in Philadelphia. Uh, he was more ambitious than I was as a businessman. He, 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 was, he was just, he knew that this was a big business and he got into it in a big way. And as you know, over the years, he's had all kinds of specials, beauty pageants and all kinds of things on television. Uh, and he's really done very well. And there's a nice guy. Anybody have a question? There's a hand. Two, three, two. There. All right. Wait. Over there. You had mentioned a disco. You have the holler. Yeah, disco team. Do you know what any of those kids are doing now apart from? Disco team, we have uh, two, uh, two tapes. Uh, but we haven't, haven't got permission to, to reproduce them. It was a Channel 47 in New York. It was a UHF station and it happened and uh, we realized it was coming to an end here for about two and a half years and uh, so we saved the Halloween tape and maybe four weeks later the show ended so we saved that tape too and they're pretty interesting to watch because we had some nice guests most of the time if we had anybody who had made a, a, a hit record or something uh, they wouldn't bring their instruments because we had no time to set up and, and uh, uh, get a good audio sound for them. So they just came and were interviewed or wandered around through the dancers and so on. So we had uh, several guests on each of those shows and they did, added a lot to it. Uh, I remember talking to a young group and I said to the one guy, I said, say something intelligent. He said, E equals MC squared. I said, that's pretty smart, you know. That's Einstein, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was great. And they had a bunch, they had a lot of fun dancing. So someday we'll do that. Maybe we'll do it illegally and just make some, you know, burn some things and do it. Because it's interesting to see, it was, there was no uh, organized dancing like on Dick Clark's show. Everybody was just dancing and doing what they felt like. And we didn't uh, demand that couples only and anything like that. Sometimes you had almost little children would sneak in, you know, and they're dancing around. But it was great. It was like a neighborhood show almost. It was very fun. Yes, we have another question here. Yes, John. John? Did you ever meet Bruce Steele? He played a week on Channel 5, which would be 
What was his name? It sounds like you said loose steel. Louis Louis Steel. Louis Steel. No, don't know that name. Where did he do this? This was Channel 5 Beaches and and uh nineteen he found in nineteen eighty, the late mid seventies. And he he was the announcer on uh uh channel channel five ten PM news would say ten PM, you know where your children are? Really? Yeah. This was on what station? Channel 5. Channel 5. Wow. Because I, I know his son now. I got a point with him. Yeah. He's on the loose, is he, the son? Yes, he is. <laughs> I no, I don't remember him. That's for sure. What year do you think? In the 80s or 70s? Huh? It was the, 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 the middle or late 70s. And he did it for a short time. Well. Anybody who lived through the 60s and 70s can't remember anything. Right? <laughs> uh, uh, yes? Well, I was born in 1983. From a personal perspective, what's your favorite horror movie? Okay, I need an interpretation. From a personal perspective, what is your favorite horror movie? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think I always liked the, the Son of Frankenstein. Uh, and of course, Frankenstein is self and so, but I thought uh, the son of Frankenstein was interesting because the, uh, the, uh, the scenery was really far out. You know, remember the castle that was kind of leaning over and you climbed up and you went in, it's huge. A lot of special effects they had going there. Uh, I thought that was kind of neat. And uh, the little boy got kidnapped through the secret door and disappeared and all that stuff. And uh, what's the guy's name that was a sergeant or something? He put the dart, put the darts in his arm. Lyle Ackle. Lyle Ackle, yeah. Inspector Crow. Yeah, Inspector, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. And it's so black and white ones, which are kind of special for where, what the time I got into them. And I, I don't know that anybody here hasn't heard the fact that I never saw those movies when I was a kid. I saw them on the television screen like you did. I never saw them in the movie house. And I didn't know what they were all about. I wasn't allowed to see them. Curses. I missed a lot of Saturday afternoon fun, too. So in, the, in the 30s, when they made all those black and white things, uh, that's when I was a teenager, and uh, I never saw them. And after a while, they stopped showing them in movie houses when I grew up, and I just never had the occasion to see them. I did read... Uh, the actual book of Frankenstein and Dracula. I felt it, I, I was duty bound to read a book, you know, and they're quite different than the uh, the movie, but they had to make some changes, I mean. But, but that was kind of neat the way uh, the Frankenstein monster ended up in the ice, in the Arctic, the Antarctic, or wherever it was, running across the ice. And, uh, well, uh, yes, 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 somebody over here, yes, there you are. Have you have you met what's her name the Miss Miss Superman out there? Not yet. Not yet. Did she get excited when she saw your T-shirt? Oh, I didn't talk to her yet. Yeah. <laughs> now what's your what's your question? Um, did you ever read the Empire? The uh, the Harvey Post, the one that Elvira was talking about. Okay, John. Male Adomi, they have the vampire. Yeah. In California, the the mid did I ever see her? Hmm? Did you ever met her? No, I never met her. No, never. Now somebody said that uh, she's still alive. Yes, she's still alive. I believe she's in her eighties. I know uh, Rudolph Wade was the author of Life of Met, and he knows Vampire. Well, he did. She did appear occasionally on the Tonight Show, didn't she? It didn't back some times ago, years ago, a long time ago. But I don't, I don't know that she's ever made any, any more movies since the Plan Nine, has she? Uh, she was in the, the, the Magic Sword, Bert Gordon movie. Uh, she played a hag who wore heavy makeup, and she was in a, a beatnik movie. Why don't you come up here? I can't hear you. Get up here and grab a microphone. <laughs> this, is, this is John. Grab a microphone. Like, yeah, Mila Nurmi um, played, played the character vampire. Uh, 
a show in the, in the 1950s in, in California, and uh, she was, they, there was a dispute with, over the, um, she had a problem with the, with the network, and uh, she believes that because of the, the show, The Addams Family was in the works, she thinks that had something to do with it, because her character was modeled after the Charles Addams character. And uh, Marilyn Normie is still alive. Uh, Rudolf Gray knows her, and he interviewed her for his book, Nightmare of Ecstasy, which uh, was the basis of the, of the movie, the Disney movie, Ed Wood. And um, my friend Richard Bajorski, years ago, he was in California, and he uh, ran into Rudolph. And uh, Rudolph said, oh, you know who this was with me? This is Ben Pyro. <laughs> and Rudolph snapped the picture of Rudolph and Vampire together, and I saw it. <laughs> but um, I hope, oh, and the, the, what I hear, the reason why she, uh, Vampire Mary Lurie doesn't come over here is because she doesn't want to get on a plane and she doesn't want to leave her cats. <laughs> I saw that somebody had a cat on the airplane that I came back to go. I was out in California. Uh, you can get on a plane with a little dog or a little cat and leave a carrier. And you'll sit on your lap all the way, which is a big change, I think. Anyway, is this working? Yes. Uh, thank you. Don't go away. Sit down. <laughs> John, John's been coming to these conventions for years and years. Oops. As you can tell, he's, he knows what's going on in this uh, crazy world of uh, scary movies and so on. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, and the white, white. Uh, what is it about uh, horror that attracts you? Me? Oh, well, um, I, what, what is it about horror that attracts me to the genre? Well, uh, well, I mean, uh, the first, the first horror movie I ever saw was The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. I was about six or seven. This was when it came out. This and must have had a big effect on you. It did. <laughs> and, um, I'm, well, I'm very much interested in the occult, the paranormal. I've been interested all my life, and that has something to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> really. Well, you, what's your latest? Uh, what's your latest uh, activity? What you, you well, um, the last, the most recent movie movie I was in was Deflowered. Um, I uh, in, was done in Indiana by with the director Johnny Walker. Now Johnny was was supposed to come to this show, but he decided not to because he was going to. He was going to put. Uh, they were going to come from Indiana to here and stop on the way in Virginia to have Conrad Brooks shoot a scene with Johnny's father for Conrad's next movie. But uh, Johnny's father had to had to work the next day, and they would only be able to um, stay one day. So they decided not to come. It's really funny. I thought he lived down in Greenwich Village or somewhere. Right. No, he lives in Virginia in a in a trailer. See, his ex his ex wife Ruthie has a tra has her own trailer, and they live in separate trailers. But uh, Conrad is in with Ruthie in Ruthie's trailer almost all the time because Ruthie is in her eighties and uh, she has trouble walking. She uses a cane in the walker. And in fact, I spoke with Conrad called me this, just this morning and asked me how was the show last night, and uh, I told him it was good. I wish he would have came, but he, he won't come in the, in the cold weather. He's afraid of, that it might snow. So. Well, uh, so uh, he, 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 Conrad may come in June, is that it? Uh, yes, he may. I hope he does. <laughs> I do too. Conrad is amazing. Uh, if he comes, I promise to get him up here. I will. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's, he's got a lot. I've never met anybody like him. The way he talks, he just grabs a hold of you. He talks in a very straight, loud voice. 
and he's, uh, and he's, uh, he's just living for films and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the biggest thing he ever did? Ooh, well, the, the, the movie he is most famous for is Plan 9 from Outer Space, in which he played Jamie the Cop. Somebody here has a colorized version of it, and someone in the theater room has a colorized version of it. What was that character again? Jamie the Cop. Oh. See, there were, there were two cops in the movie. One is Kelton the Cop, played by Paul Marco, and the other cop was Jamie. Were they in the, the graveyard scene? Yes, oh. yes. Okay. With Tor Johnson, who Conrad oh, said yeah. was a very, a very nice guy, Tor Johnson. Yeah. Well, well, that's great. You make sure he gets up here, will you? For I him? will. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would take another question. Yes, sir. Exactly. Well, I mentioned uh, to my coworkers, I'm coming to Chua Theater. They asked me, "Well, who's going to be there?" I mentioned some of the actors and actresses, and they look at me and they say, "It doesn't ring a bell." And then I say, "Well, Zachary's going to be there." And their eyes light up, and they smile across their face and say, oh my goodness, I love Zachary. How does it feel to be able to I, I, sat, I sat and watched that DVD. Uh, I haven't really seen it once in like this last week. I have to look at it again. And I thought, this really was crazy. Yeah. Late at night, you know, uh, and the other competition was Jack Parr. And I don't know who else, but uh, I said, this is insane, but, that what I was doing, uh, jumping into a movie and making fun of the commercials and all that stuff. Nobody was doing that. Well, I wasn't aware of it at the time. It just seemed like a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, it said, I, you know, I, I'm amazed I was on the air doing that stuff. How to get away with it? I don't know. Amazing. I was really insulting the commercials sometimes, you know, and the, and the actors make comments to them. Uh, it was a really bad movie. Oh, I don't know. I, I, it was a great experience. And uh, it led to other things. I ended up doing the, the dancing show because somebody thought, well, you know, a lot of young people are watching the other shows, so maybe they'll watch the dancing show. So that owned for us for about two and a half years. And when that died, because the station wanted to go all Spanish uh, language, Channel 47 it was. And uh, so a friend of mine said, hey, they're making changes on <coughs> FM radio. You've lived through all these changes from 78s to 45s, to stereo, to FM, to CDs, all this stuff, and to little bitty cameras, you know, you can hear and send pictures all over the world. Uh, I've kind of avoided all that stuff. <laughs> I've got a tiller, but I've got a uh, fax machine, which I don't really use. And a rotary phone, uh, which I'm hanging on to just for fun. And uh, that's about as electronically as I've gotten. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get into computers because I really think I would have enjoyed uh, the, the digital cameras, though, you can make your own prints. That'd be great, great fun. But I didn't do that. Uh, I forget what your question was. <laughs> it was, how does it feel to be a living legend where everyone I ever speak to uh, knows you and remembers you with great fondness? Well, I couldn't quite hear, but I think you're saying, well, to me, it's just amazing to meet all of you people. And uh, right away, I say, where were you? Where'd you live when you were a kid, you know? And what was it like? And, oh, well, my mother and father wouldn't let me watch, but after they went to bed, we'd sneak downstairs and look at the late movie or whatever. And some of the people couldn't watch the late movie, and they didn't see me until I got on Channel 9, where they played the movies at 9 o'clock on Friday night, and then noon on Saturday and Sunday, I think, something like that and Channel 11, which is a very strange place for me to be in the midst of the kitty afternoon when all the uh, independent stations were trying to capture an audience for their commercial people. And they were showing cartoons and Chuck McCann and uh, Captain Jack, Captain, Captain Jack, what do you have, and Popeye, right? And uh, Officer Joe and the Three Stooges. And I was doing that for a while. It was the one part of uh, Hercules, Hercules cartoons, which weren't my favorite cartoons, but the station loved it because they, they were the first ones to show them on the air, and they thought that was a big deal. But I didn't like them because they weren't very, there wasn't much motion in the person, that kind of thing. Uh, so they put me on the late movies. 
but it, these conventions are just an immense amount of fun to come and meet people. You've all got memories of uh, what you used to watch and what you weren't allowed to watch, that kind of thing. It has been great. And some of you grew up to be entertainers like Sean here. <laughs> I had no idea what I was thinking of doing this when I was a kid. When I got out of the Army, I didn't know what to do, and uh, uh, two of my best friends also didn't know what to do, and eventually I started hanging out with a, a theater group, uh, making scenery, and it seemed like, like to do that, things like that. And eventually they said, do a small part, and it kept building, and then finally uh, I was on that uh, cowboy show that I mentioned earlier, was one of the ladies that worked at that theater and told me they were having auditions. And fortunately for me, I got there four weeks after they had the auditions and threw away all the paperwork that they gathered about people. And I walked in and said, gee, can, can, can I do something? I said, oh, sure. Hired me right away as an extra just to stand there and hold a horse or something when somebody galloped in. And eventually they said, you know, I've told this to her. I wish I could find that lady, but her name was uh, Hmm. Slipped me. Anyway, she was the wardrobe lady for this cowboy show. And uh, the, engine, the, the, the director told me that one day she said, why don't you give that guy something to say? He looks so forlorn over there holding my horse. And that's how I got, started getting parts <coughs> and, uh, on TV. And it just happened. Hello. Oh, somebody else is coming in? Oh, OK. Somebody else is coming in here to talk, talk, talk. <laughs> this is a great little room. I like this room. Nice room. Okay. The other was kind of spectacular because you see the sky all the way up and they didn't have all these curtains here. But uh, it's fun to be here again. Well, I hope you come back and do. Yes, you got to way back there. I'd like to ask Mr. Leck a question. How many movies did you make and which one was your favorite? Oh, uh, over 15 of them. Uh, my, my favorite, uh, probably make. Well, the ones in which have the biggest part, and and the ones in which are, are on cable, probably uh, uh, Gladiator, Eroticus. I like uh, uh, Titanic 2000, Mr. Frankenstein. I got to work with uh, uh, Michael Thomas, Makeup Man. Oh yeah, he's not, guy, here today. yeah he's not here today. He's not here today. You know Michael Thomas did the Frankenstein and Hunchback uh, with the Wolfman all this stuff. Yeah. Okay, I didn't hear the question, but I guess he didn't hear it. Thank you for coming. I've heard that I've told these stories before many times, but you're, you're very nice for coming. Thank you, John. Good man. <laughs> Good luck, John. And don't forget to get in touch with Conrad. Because I want him to tell that story about him and. Uh... Poor Johnson? No, no, uh, the guy who was uh, oh. Dr. Mill. Joe, Joe, uh, you know. Joseph Wiseman? Who? Joseph Wiseman? Joseph Wiseman? You got it. Yeah. We had a great, great something happen on the set of the movie where, uh, the movie, the movie, the movie, the movie, the movie, the Anyway, anyway, thank you for coming. And I'll catch up with the rest of you outside there. Boy, what a beautiful day. I can't believe it's such a nice weather for you. Something's going on with this weather, really. We should be knee deep in snow by now. Thank you, John. Thank all of you. Thank you, my dear.